Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 17 of the chapter Thermodynamics. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the standard enthalpy of formation. In the previous video, we studied about the enthalpies of uh, phase transformations, that is the enthalpy of uh, fusion, the enthalpy of sublimation, the enthalpy of vaporization, the enthalpy of condensation. And I also explained to you that all of these are basically enthalpies of reactions and different types of reactions where the name of the enthalpy changes according to the nature of the reaction. When we are talking of the enthalpy of a reaction where a formation of a compound is taking place, we call it the enthalpy of formation. But there are certain things that are very specific when we talk of different enthalpies. So let us understand what exactly do we mean when we say what is the standard. The word standard has its meaning, the conditions should be standard, enthalpy of formation. The definition is that the standard enthalpy change for the formation of one mole of a compound from its elements, whatever the constituent elements are, from its elements in their most stable states of aggregation, which are also called the reference states. That is, um, I'll come to that later. From their reference states is called standard molar enthalpy of formation. Every word has a meaning. Standard enthalpy change is when we are talking of the standard, we mean that the elements should be in their reference states, right? And when we say standard, it means the pressure is one bar and standard condition means that the substance is in its purest form. And since it is forming one mole of a compound, therefore we call it the molar enthalpy. It is for one mole of a compound which is formed from the constituent elements. So it is known as the standard molar enthalpy. Enthalpy is the change in heat content of formation. Formation is the kind of reaction that is taking place, formation of a compound. So when it says that these elements that it is made from should be in their most stable states of aggregation, which are also known as reference states, what does the reference state mean? The reference state of an element is the most stable state of aggregation at what are the conditions? 25 degrees Celsius and 1 bar pressure. You remember when we said the standard conditions? Under standard conditions, I told you in the previous, uh, in video number 15, I told you that standard conditions are where you have 1 bar pressure, the substance is in its purest form and the temperature can vary. It can be any temperature at which the substance is in its purest form. But reference state, or the most stable state of aggregation is a little different from that standard state. How? That here the temperature is also fixed. The temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. The substance should be pure and whatever form of that substance, whatever aggregate form, when I say aggregate, let me explain. There are different allotropic forms of elements. For example, you have rhombic sulfur, you have monoclinic sulfur. Similarly, you have uh, what? Um, you have carbon which is present in the form of graphite, in the uh, form of diamond. Now out of these allotropic forms, which is the purest form of aggregate at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 bar? So you would say in the case of carbon, we use the, that form, which allotropic form? Graphite. That form is more stable and therefore we say that we uh, use it for the preparation of whatever compounds that contain carbon and in the case of sulfur at 25 degrees celsius and one bar pure sulfur which form of sulfur would be uh, more stable rhombic sulfur would be more stable so when we are talking of the reference state it means if we are taking sulfur we are talking of rhombic sulfur if we talk of carbon we are talking of graphite not diamond so it's the reference state only tells you that under these conditions, which is the most stable form of aggregation, when you say aggregation, that element in nature, how is it present in its purest form at that temperature and that pressure would be known as its reference state. That is the state we are referring to because we have fixed the conditions, right? So the reference state of an element is the most stable state of aggregation at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 bar pressure, for example. Hydrogen is present as a gas at 25 degrees Celsius, 1 bar pressure. Oxygen is also present as a gas. Carbon, the 
the allotrope graphite is most stable at this temperature therefore we for all reactions of combination or formation we will be using graphite and sulfur we have rhombic sulfur for different elements they have different reference states another thing that when you have to write the enthalpy of formation the sign that you use is delta h is the change in enthalpy f means formation it is an enthalpy of reaction where the reaction you remember for enthalpy of reaction we write delta h r where r represents is the reaction here the type of reaction is a formation reaction so we will write delta h f so it means that the formation it is the enthalpy of formation and the negative with inside a circle as a superscript shows that it is the standard that means that the elements are in their reference states having understood this let us now come to these understand this part better the definition better when he said that the standard enthalpy change is for the formation of one mole that one mole is very important let us see how you have this reaction h2 combines with half molecule of o2 or one mole of h2 combines with half mole of oxygen why am i not saying molecule because we are talking in terms of molar enthalpy so our equations should be in uh, terms of moles although in terms of molecules also this would be right but we should talk in terms of moles and there is one problem with molecules if it was molecules you cannot have half a molecule of oxygen half a molecule of oxygen would be an atom of oxygen it would lose its properties as a molecule so uh, it would be right to call them molar equations so hydrogen combines with half a mole of oxygen to give you one mole of water and the enthalpy change in this reaction is 285.8 kilojoules for one mole of water is this the enthalpy of formation for water yes it is why because one mole of water is being formed from its constituent elements which are in their reference states hydrogen should be a gas oxygen should be a gas at 25 degrees celsius and one bar pressure therefore this is right usually you know the enthalpies of formation for elements in their reference states how do you calculate the enthalpy change in a reaction enthalpy change in a reaction is whatever is the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants that is the summation of the sum of the enthalpies of the products minus sum of the enthalpies of the reactants now usually for elements which are in their reference states <coughs> the enthalpy of formation for those elements is zero so when you are finding out the enthalpy of this change you know the enthalpy for h2o is 285.8 kilojoules per mole minus the enthalpies of these and both of these would be zero because they are elements right so this is something that when you carry out uh, numerical when you are doing numerical problems you have to keep this in mind that the standard enthalpy is for or the enthalpies of elements in their reference states is always taken to be equal to zero if they are pure let us take another uh, reaction formation reaction you have carbon in the form of graphite why have we written graphite to specify that we are taking carbon in its reference state so we have carbon as graphite and hydrogen in the gaseous form again in the reference state both of them are elements and they are giving us one mole of methane and the enthalpy change involved in this reaction is delta hf negative that is the enthalpy standard enthalpy of formation is equal to minus 74.81 kilojoules per mole remember for any enthalpy if the sign is negative it means the reaction is giving out heat if the sign is positive it means the reaction is absorbing heat so if this value is negative it means this is an exothermic reaction in the formation of one mole of methane from graphite and hydrogen uh, how much 74.81 kilojoules of heat would be given out again you have graphite two atoms of graphite or oh, sorry two moles of graphite again in this it is in its uh, which state the reference state three moles of hydrogen and half a mole of oxygen remember when i am talking of one mole i mean one mole of the product the substance that is being formed should be one mole but the requirement of the raw materials that is the elements may not be one mole it may be any number of moles but the product that is formed should be one mole always keep this in mind when you are finding out the enthalpy of formation for a uh, for a compound 
So we say carbon, two moles of carbon combines with three moles of hydrogen and half a mole of oxygen to give you one mole of ethanol. So would this enthalpy, whatever its enthalpy is, would it be the enthalpy of formation? Yes, it would be. Why? Because all elements were in their reference states. Secondly, there was only one mole of the compound being formed. Therefore, this energy, 277.7 kilojoules per mole is the enthalpy of formation for ethanol and since it has a negative value it means it is an exothermic process. So here I've written this specially that always keep in mind that the product should be one mole. The reactants need not be one mole each. So when you're identifying whether a reaction is, uh, uh, is actually the enthalpy of formation you have to make sure that the product or the compound that you get should be one mole. So how do we, here I've given you two errors, how you can identify this is not the enthalpy of uh, formation. You have calcium oxide in the solid state. This is its reference state. Plus carbon dioxide, which is the gaseous state. This is also its reference state, giving you calcium carbonate. And the enthalpy of reaction given here is minus 178.3 kilojoules per mole. One mole of calcium carbonate is being formed, therefore that one mole part is satisfied. Then why is this not the enthalpy of formation? Why are we calling it the enthalpy of reaction? The reason is that for it to be enthalpy of formation, whatever compound is being formed should be formed from its elements. And this is being formed from compounds. Both calcium oxide and carbon dioxide are compounds. And the definition tells us that one mole of a compound from its elements in their most stable states of aggregation. And this is not being formed from the elements. Therefore, this enthalpy, there is a reaction enthalpy. All reactions have it, uh, enthalpy. So the, but this reaction enthalpy is not, cannot be identified as the enthalpy of formation. It may be a combination reaction. It may be an enthalpy of combination, an enthalpy of reaction. But it is not the enthalpy of formation. Right? Take another example, you have hydrogen combining with bromine, one mole of hydrogen combining with one mole of bromine to produce two moles of HBr. Again, things are in their reference states, but what is the problem? Here also we have enthalpy of reaction, we do not have enthalpy of formation. The reason being that we are getting two moles of HBr and according to definition we are required to get one mole of the compound that is being formed. Therefore. This condition is not being fulfilled and hence this enthalpy cannot be the enthalpy of formation. But if I wanted to calculate the enthalpy after all, both of these are elements, they are in their reference states and what is being formed is a compound, then how can I turn it into the enthalpy of formation? The only problem I have here is the number of moles of the substances. We know that the enthalpies of uh, reaction or sorry formation of both the elements would be zero. So whatever enthalpy is there that magnitude it depends on these two moles of HBr. So if I want to find out the enthalpy of formation for this reaction all I should do is divide it by two divide this value by two then I will get the enthalpy for one for the formation of one mole of HBr. That would be right because according to definition it should be the enthalpy uh, change that takes place in the formation of one mole of the compound and if I had to do that how would I change this reaction I would change it to half mole of hydrogen combines with half mole of bromine in their reference states to give me HBr which is a liquid and now the enthalpy of formation is half of this therefore and negative again tells me that this much of heat is given out whatever the magnitude is it was 72.8 kilojoules per mole and now when you half it you get 36.4 kilojoules per mole so this is how you can identify whether the equation tells you about enthalpy and if the equation asks you for enthalpy of formation and you've been given the equation which is which is not giving you one mole of product then what should you you should divide it by that stoichiometric coefficient in order to get the right answer now look at this equation <coughs> when scientists they are dealing with reactions how does this knowledge of enthalpy of formation help them because all reactions that are carried out industrially or for different purposes are not always formation reactions. But how is this knowledge of enthalpy of formation helpful to manufacturers or to scientists? 
You remember just as we had a table <coughs> of enthalpies of vaporization and fusion for different substances. In the same way, we have a table which gives us the enthalpies of formation of different, different substances. So if you want to find out the enthalpy of a reaction, theoretically, you don't, you're not carrying it out practically and you just want to know theoretically what would be the uh, enthalpy of reaction. You can calculate it with the help of this table if you know the enthalpies of formation of individual substances. For example, you have this reaction, calcium carbonate solid, decomposes it is the opposite of this reaction calcium carbonate decomposes to give you calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and the question is how would you find out the enthalpy of reaction how would you know the enthalpy of reaction for this reaction so we know enthalpy of reaction is the summation of the enthalpies of products minus the summation of enthalpies of reactants and a and b give you the stoichiometric coefficients you will have to multiply each value by the stoichiometric coefficient in this case all three stoichiometric coefficients are one if you do not know what i'm talking about please i would encourage you to watch the previous video i've explained very well uh, the previous two videos where i've explained a and b to you so now if i have to calculate delta RH, that is uh, the enthalpy of reaction, the standard enthalpy of reaction. I should know the standard enthalpies of formation of all these uh, components, that is the reactants and the products. And I refer to the table, I check their values, and now what do I do? I write down the stoichiometric coefficient of the product, that is calcium oxide. What are the, the sum of the products? So we write stoichiometric coefficient of calcium oxide into the enthalpy of formation of calcium oxide plus stoichiometric coefficient of carbon dioxide since stoichiometric coefficients in these cases are one therefore it seems an unnecessary step but if you had an equation where there was a different stoichiometric coefficient you would have had to use that value so here we we'll say the stoichiometric coefficient of uh, carbon dioxide and uh, into uh, was one and into the uh, enthalpy of formation the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide minus the uh, stoichiometric coefficient of calcium carbonate into the enthalpy of formation of a uh, standard enthalpy of formation of car calcium carbonate when we put substitute these values by taking these values from the table these are the values we get one into minus what does minus indicate loss of energy it means that these are exothermic reactions the formation of which uh, compound calcium oxide is an exothermic process where it is formed from calcium and oxygen to produce one mole of calcium oxide the amount of heat given out for the formation of one mole of calcium oxide would be 635.1 kilojoule per mole this is what you understand by the enthalpies standard enthalpies of formation so we just substitute the values 1 into minus 635.1 kilojoules per mole plus 1 that is the stoichiometric coefficient of carbon dioxide and what is the enthalpy it is minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole and now minus the stoichiometric coefficient again is 1 and what is the enthalpy of formation of calcium carbonate it is minus 1206.9 kilojoules per mole when you find out the when you solve this entire problem mathematical uh, part the answer you get is positive 178.3 kilojoules per mole which means the enthalpy of this reaction is positive 178.3 kilojoules per mole that means for breaking down calcium carbonate into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide you have to provide the system with a net energy of 178.3 kilojoules per mole or you could say for the breaking down of one mole of calcium carbonate into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide you have to provide 178.3 kilojoules of heat or energy so this was the standard enthalpy of formation if you found the video helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now